everybody. What you may or may not know is that there is more than one bird nerd at Lowry Nature Center. I know, it's hard to believe. Um, I'm outside at home. I have been watching for some of the birds that are arriving back. Um, there's one in particular that I noticed that I'm doing a little sketch of, and I will take that sketch into the studio with you guys. I'm using my binoculars and using my marker and whiteboard to do a quick gesture sketch. This is just a sketch that's very simple, very quick, and it kind of outlines the movement that I'm seeing from this bird. I can only sketch so fast in the field. I figured I'd sketch today on this guy instead of my notebook. A little bit easier for you to see. Do any of you have guesses which bird I noticed in my yard? And what I'm trying to do here is just capture, I call it the birditude. So what is the bird, how is it moving? What kind of attitude does it have? Um, I'm gonna bring this into the studio and I'm going to grab a couple reference photos and do a little bit longer drawing to study this bird. All right, I am back in my studio, warming up. Here's a question, why draw? So up until fairly recently, drawing and painting were a few of the only ways that scientists or naturalists had to record what they were seeing. If you were looking through a microscope, you'd be making your own sketches. And people still do this. Um, it's easier, now we can hook a camera onto a microscope and that's fantastic, but there's something about drawing. So, why draw? It's fun. It's just super fun to see something that you create coming to life. Um, and it's a really good skill to have. Um, the other thing I put on here, is you remember more. So there's a quote um, that I really like from John Muir Laws, who is a naturalist, artist, author, kind of a Renaissance guy. But he says the reason that he does nature journaling, sketching, drawing, um, to see, to remember, and to be curious. So I see no more than you but I have trained myself to notice what I see. Sherlock Holmes, great quote. That's drawing, that's why I do this. It's fun, it helps me remember more, and I become more curious. And also, I find myself noticing a lot more of what's around me every day, all the time. Songbirds. So, um, I'm gonna take this, and I'm going to show you guys a couple of steps um, that you can use to draw birds that are more realistic. Personally, I like being able to kind of use my notes as my own field guide. Um, so, I'm gonna show you the steps between that quick sketch and a sketch more like this one. Okay, materials. So, I just filled up my nature journal. This one's full. I have a new one ordered. In the meantime, I'm gonna do my drawing in here. This is a sketch pad that I have um, with some nice acid-free paper so that my drawing doesn't turn yellow. Um, and I'm going to be using my trusty 2B pencil and eraser. And I will be doing this sketch in ballpoint again, similar to the one that I did a couple weeks ago. Speaking of, I did finish that drawing. I thought I'd share it with you guys. So, here's the drawing. I did this last time, all finished up. And this week, this drawing was of the mason bee nest tunnels. And this week for the first time, I saw my first mason bee out in my yard. All right, let's get to drawing, here we go. drawing I am I work from simple shapes 
to more complex shapes. So, um, where it starts is basically just a couple of lines to capture the attitude of this bird. And let me bring that up. You guys can see me working on that. Once I get that line in place, then um, I start bringing in a layer of additional shapes, circles, ovals, um, that help map out the bird. So in looking at my reference, the line of the body, I start off with this. And then I'm gonna add the tail, which goes up above the body. So, really simple line, uh, and that's kind of how I visualize, or begin visualizing the body. Um, next, I start adding a circle for the head, a uh, circle or oval for the shape of the body, and then I kind of tip that based on the angles and specific shapes I'm seeing in the bird. Um, and I'm gonna adjust mine a little bit. I wanna make sure that those ovals overlap because if you don't get that circle of the head kind of part of the oval or circle of the body, then your bird's gonna look like it uh, is decapitated. Um, so let me try that again. There, a couple ovals. And then just a couple shapes to map out the attitude of that tail. It's a little tough to see in pencil in my drawing because I'm keeping that really light. I tend to go back and erase the pencil back out because I'm gonna do this in ink, but you could keep it in pencil and have a fantastic drawing. One thing you'll see me doing throughout this drawing is once I have those general shapes in place, I come back in and I begin tweaking those shapes. I make an outline or a contour and start following the really specific shapes for this house rent. So I'm basically carving those circles and ovals into the shape of this particular bird. And that's all I've been doing. I start mapping in the angles of the wing, the angles of the beak and the eye, angles of the tail, and this all builds on everything else and it starts adding more detail to the drawing. And once I'm to the point where I like the drawing, I'm going to switch over and move into ink. I'm bringing in my ballpoint pen to add the checkerboard pattern. There's a really subtle checked pattern in wrens, particularly house wrens, that you can see when their wings are a little bit extended or their tail is a little bit extended. So I'm using a heavier weight ink in order to map this out in my drawing. Okay, right here, we already have a really nice finished drawing. I like the pen and ink. I like the shadow that I've added to it. So I've adjusted the values. I've got light areas, I've got dark areas, I've got the pattern, um, and I'm pretty happy with the drawing. It reads like a house rent, which is my goal. I'm gonna go a little bit farther on this one. I like this drawing a lot. I might use it as a reference for a painting. And um, to do that, I like to play around with values. So areas of light and dark because it helps me map out my painting. I'm going to add just a couple more materials here. Um, I'll show you real quick. I'm gonna use these. These are brush pens by Tombow. Um, they have a pointed tip and a brush tip. And I'm going to be using these to quickly add value to the background um, and then just go a little bit farther. I might be able to sketch in some values throughout the rest of this.
for watching, everybody. Back to you, Kirk. See ya. Bye.